to everything. There's the chat there. Cool. And it's great. So I have some stuff to get done today. I've got some retouching to do that I is a little bit overdue. I've got this personal project up here that I shot with Cass. Let me just get one of the images up here. Um, I shot another uh, girl, L on the same day. And you might have seen that on my YouTube, no, on my Instagram and on my website and stuff like that. But I still need to retouch some of these images with Cass. So we'll get into that. I was debating whether to retouch uh, some Speedo imagery that I have. I recently did a job for Speedo and we did some stuff underwater. Let me see if I can find some of that imagery for you. Um, but I think I will leave that for now. There's one of the images there. Very chuffed with how those turned out. Um, shooting underwater is no joke, as I found out kind of on the day. I had done a little test beforehand. <laughs> but when the heat is on and when the client is kind of uh, looking over your shoulder, it's a different story altogether. But... Yeah, really pleased with how that turned out. I haven't done too much retouching to this final image here. I kind of, um, let me just see if I can, I can't really point with my pen, but oh yeah, I've got my cursor here, getting used to this live stuff. So I kind of added in these uh, water droplets here, which obviously wouldn't be on the camera anyway because the camera is in an underwater housing, but I think just with being underwater, it's a nice effect. These streams of light here, they were in the shot anyway. Um, I just emphasised those with a little bit of a brush effect and uh, pretty pleased with how it turned out. A few lessons, a few takeaways. Skin tones underwater are tricky to balance, uh, especially when you're not using any flash or anything. So I will definitely be testing out shooting stuff underwater with some flash, with some light. I digress. So I think we will retouch uh, one of these today. We did a few different setups. Uh, let me give you a quick walk through, a quick uh, sort of debrief of the shoot. We, so we shot Cass here initially on this sofa um, and just kind of get into it with these first few shots. These are some of the selects that I've pulled out. Um, so yeah, and I really have been getting into working more with the model uh, to create like nice shapes, nice silhouettes. So it's a little bit of a skill that needs developing uh, and I think can often be overlooked by photographers um, actually getting what you need out of the model, taking your time and realizing if you are or if you aren't getting what you need. So. Uh, yeah, this was a this was one of those practices. This one, this was a test, um, and this was one of those instances where I got to practice quite a bit with Cass, and we kind of just went back and forth and worked our way into it. We shot a few different outfits uh, again, just kind of encouraging Cass to make shapes with her limbs, if that makes sense. Um, and again, on this sofa here, and I think we shot some side profile ones which turned out really nice here as well. I like this uh, shape that we got when she arched her back and kind of pointed her toes. I think they turned out really nice. This is just shit. shit. This is just shot with constant light. Um, we've got one Profoto B10 plus head on a warm setting just to the left and we've also got a big window that it was later in the day, but it was kicking in a bit of light there. So it gives a nice warm hue to the image. These are the TIFFs. They've already got a color grade on them. And some of these kind of worked, some of them didn't. I just wanted to encourage Cass to move around. This perhaps isn't the most flattering of angle, of shapes, but then the next few frames, especially this one, as a silhouette, as a sort of shape, I think this works really well. So I'm really chuffed with this one. Yeah, really like that one. And just some nice portraits. She's a brilliant model to work with. So again, just working into making shapes, silhouettes, getting her to drop a hip, that sort of thing. These are all shot on the 50 mil lens. 
which I've been trying to get away from recently. But uh, it's just such a lovely all-round lens. Uh, I really like it for these sort of full-length portraits. And I really like it for these tighter sort of mid-range, mid-crop portraits. But the trouble is, if you stick to one lens all the time, you end up with a portfolio that is all the same, all the same crops. How are we looking? Just checking out this live stream. Yeah, quite cool. Pretty good, pretty good setup. I'm happy with how well the laptop is handling it. I've just got a new M1 Mac Pro, the 16 inch, uh, the base level of the M1 Pro 16 inches, if that makes sense. And uh, yeah, it's great. We've got OBS running, we've got multiple screens running, we've got Capture One running, and it is holding everything. Um, I really enjoy doing these live streams. I'm a little out of practice, um, but I did them on my older laptop. But it just couldn't quite hold up. Um, so I aborted it for a couple of years whilst that laptop was on its knees. But we're here now and we're doing live stream. So happy days. Right, I am going to go for uh, this image here. This is one that's kind of stuck in my head um, when I think back to this shoot. So this is one that I'm going to get retouched and share this moment with you. So I will just show this in Finder. Boom, boom. And I will drag it into Photoshop here. Now, I don't think it needs much retouching, if anything. There is some like uneven skin tones here um, and perhaps, you know, it's nice on the arms. Yeah, maybe a few blemishes on the face, but otherwise the light is nice and even. Basically what I kind of, the only thing that I really do in Photoshop, especially with kind of beauty retouching or fashion retouching of this nature, is I get rid of a, flu a few blemishes and I even out the light basically. Especially when you're shooting in lower light conditions such as this. I don't know what my settings were on this. But uh, ISO 64, uh, 640, which is actually lower than I thought, uh, one 320th of a second at 2.8. So not too bad. I've stretched it a little bit. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much I've put in here. A third of a stop uh, to up the exposure. Just to give you guys a little look here. This is the raw which is nice actually. <laughs> and then that's my grade, which is a bit more golden, a bit warmer. Do you ever do that when you take the grade off and you're like, oh, actually, looks better without the grade on it. But alas, we are here. I'm not gonna tinker about too much with the grade. So I will run through my basic retouching. This is very, um, it's gonna be very basic today. So uh, don't expect anything that is world beating, uh, yeah, or is gonna shake the world. But that's just how I am with my retouching. I try and get as close as I can in camera and uh, not have to do too much. Anything, I tend to play with the light more and add in little bits of light here and there rather than kind of adjusting facial features and such. So at this point, I could duplicate this layer twice more and do frequency separation, which most of you, if you've, if you've attempted retouching, will have heard of. Um, you basically do a low layer where you blur it and you do a high layer on a linear pass uh, applied to the lower layer. Google or search YouTube for frequency separation. And uh, yeah, it's a great way of retouching. There's also dodging and burning, which I am not majorly familiar with. Or you can just go straight into it um, with a patch tool. Uh, now, this may de be deemed quite uh, primitive to a lot of people, but uh, I've actually spoke to a few high-end retouchers and they say, especially if you are um, just retouching for socials, it's not gonna be blown up onto big banners or anything like that, or you know, window displays or in-store and stuff. You can you can do this quite confidently. And uh, I don't even know if I needed to remove that. 
Um, you can do this quite confidently. Uh, it holds the texture quite well now. I think Photoshop is constantly improving like things like how the patch tool works. Instead of ending up with a big blurry spot, you actually it actually holds the texture quite nicely. And Cass has lovely skin, so there's not too much to do there. I'm just being a little bit picky, really. I'm just being picky. Um, but if nothing else, there's perhaps a little bit of uneven light. We do have sort of a dark sort of patch under the eyes. And um, yeah, perhaps the left side of her face, camera right, is a little darker than I would hope. Oh, no, actually, when I zoom out, it's fine. So I will go into that later and I'll brighten that up a little bit. When I click away, the chat disappears. So pardon me if you are in the chat and I'm not replying. Uh, yeah, so like I was saying, I would, especially for evening out light, I will usually do this frequency separation. So Command J and I will just rename this low and I will rename this high and I will highlight both and I will group them together and that way I can sh flick it on, off and on later and you guys can see what exactly it is that I've done. And I'll just do a Gaussian blur at about eight radius. So now we can see we've got a blurry image and I'll go to high and I will go to apply image and I'll apply this image to the low and I will do subtract scale two offset 128. Don't ask me the technicalities of why this works. It's just something that I've picked up along the way. So now we have all this stuff going on. Our image looks exactly the same. And the low layer is basically affecting your light and the high layer is affecting your textures. So any textures that you needed to manipulate with say the clone tool or the patch tool or anything like that, do that in your high layer. And any light adjustments, do that in your low layer as you will see. So if I press S here for my clone tool, and I'll have that to lighten, and I'll have it to about 20 opacity 30 flow, give or take 10% either way. If you're being really picky, go down to sort of 10 to 15% if you really want to work into it, but we're doing a quick retouch here. Uh, and if you are doing a quick retouch, let's see what sort of 20, uh, 20 is doing and we'll have a little look so click your source click nearby and just brush it in and don't go too hasty before you check back and see what you've affected so zoom in do a little bit, bit of work zoom out see how that is with retouching it's all about um, taste it's all about less is more for me you see a lot of retouching and this is where photographers and editors are ruining images um they are just demolishing them in photoshop making skin silky rubbery uh, not keeping textures not keeping realistic shadows things like that and uh, it's great to see that there's so much more conversation about you know attainable goals and everything obviously these are models that we're shooting with who photograph really well. Um, but I don't want to uh, retouch people a little too much. So that's where we are. Excuse me one second. I'm just gonna have a little drink here. You don't want to hear me like glugging away. So hopefully that came out okay. Hopefully you weren't listening to me glug. So this is our group here flick this off and on let me go here we go here we go let me flick this off and on if I zoom in here we're just taking a little bit of that shadow out of the eye now it's still there and I'm okay with it and uh, the way I look at retouching is basically if I could have, if you'd given me all day and I'd sat the model 
in this pose, I could have lit it. I could have got rid of that little dark patch under the eye. With a little reflector, I could have kicked in a little light or something, but we'd be there all day. So I'm just gonna do that in post-production. My conscious, my conscience is clear and um, there we go. It's not too, not too crazy. We're not creating, uh, like I say, unattainable, uh, unattainable goals. Uh, at least I hope not. I hope not. Which is quite interesting. It's, uh, it's, I try and only retouch pictures of women as much as I would retouch pictures of men because you know women have had to deal with these unrealistic beauty standards so and then when and often you know naturally when I'm retouching a uh, male um, it's more like rugged barely any skin retouching or anything like that so trying to keep that same energy as they say. I hope that makes sense. Hope that, does that sound, you know, I realise I'm saying this as I'm retouching sort of like little bits of skin, but I, I'm hoping we don't go too unrealistic with this. And I'm just being pretty fast here. Do I even need to take that little dark patch out? Probably not. A few little dark lines under the chin here. Uh, so if we zoom out just to see Cass's face and we flip this off and on, we've taken a little bit out of the underneath the eye. Maybe a little too much, maybe a little too much. If I was to decrease the opacity here, I quite like just leaving, I think I might just leave that in, in there a little bit. Mm, no, no. Okay. And most people who aren't photographers who view this wouldn't give this a second thought, but here we are. So uh, I've done a little bit there and I'm just going to go around and even out the light on the rest of cast. There's a little, sort of like little dark patch of light around here. So where her arm has blocked it. So we're just sampling the nearby tones and just bringing them into that sort of shadowy bit there. This, see even 20 is a bit too harsh there. It was really sort of not subtle. Yeah. So I tried filming a YouTube video yesterday actually, while we're here, while I'm doing this. I tried filming a YouTube video yesterday. Uh, I'm wrestling with YouTube a little bit at the moment and what sort of content uh, to create. I um, I love making I do <laughs> I love making YouTube videos. I just can't quite find the right type of videos to make. Um, I watch a lot of folk like Matt Diavella and you know thought provoking uh, work related uh, philosophy related um, YouTube channels, and that's what I enjoy watching. So that's what I try and make but I always end up tangling myself up in knots and honestly it totally ruined my day yesterday all day all night filmed an intro it was like a vloggy type thing I was talking about um, that feeling of being stuck you know tying yourself in knots and Here's proof that I can't articulate it well enough, but it was basically uh, that feeling of being stuck and how to get yourself out of it, uh, the ways that I do it when I feel like I'm getting stuck. Although that actually doesn't happen too much these days due to a few sort of like techniques and stuff that I have developed, uh, modes of self-reflection and things like that. Um, so I just wanted to drop that in, in a vlog and kind of vlog the day, but... Uh, wasn't really working. It was sticky and it got me very frustrated because I thought I could just pick up a camera 
and create one of these videos. However, the stuff that does come easiest to me is the stuff like the latest video that I did with Dominic Woodin, where I went along, shot some BTS whilst I was shooting images and uh, just kind of narrated over the top of it and did a little talky bit at the end and talked through my process and I feel like that stuff is quite valuable to people I feel like folk who are just learning or even if you're not just learning it's always interesting for me anyway to see a, another photographer's process uh, and that stuff kind of comes easier to me so that is probably the sort of thing that I'm going to focus on I do really enjoy just sitting here and retouching and uh, blethering away basically so you can see on the stomach I've kind of lessened that shadow there that's falling that looked kind of odd and I'm just evening out the light on her arm I'm really kind of plucking at straws here because we don't really need to do much retouching at all. Uh, where I have done a lot of retouching was that recent speedo shoot so what I'll do is when I've finished this shortly I will crack that open and I will kind of break down the different layers and how I went about that which is maybe what I should have done in the first place but here we are I need to retouch these images of Cass because you can see up here I actually shot this in February Jeez. Jeez, February, that was a long time ago, time flies. Uh, I got retouching some of the other stuff we shot on that day, some jobs came up, lots of retouching to do on certain jobs, well loads of retouching now that I think about it, jobs that I had kind of fall at the same time and uh, some stuff especially when it's personal work kind of gets pushed to the back and here we are a few months later and I'm only doing the retouching now but uh, I try and communicate with the team as much as possible to to kind of reassure them that I haven't forgot about it. I'm just super busy. And uh, yeah, yeah. It was really quiet at the time of shooting. It had been really quiet and then suddenly I had a bunch of jobs uh, all come in one after the other. They all kind of booked on the same week and they all kind of, they all got in touch in the same week and they all booked within weeks of each other and it really just like went from zero to a hundred really quick which I'm super grateful for. Um, we shot some Speedo stuff, we shot some re recent uh, stuff for Fitcher which you can see on my Instagram which is like a smart mirror company. Uh, one step closer to landing that Peloton job. Um, if you don't know we used to have a Peloton but we've uh, recently sold it because uh, we're moving and um, yeah absolutely love using it love their imagery and their whole thing so that is one client that's kind of on the bucket list you know which might seem odd because their stocks are plummeting or have plummeted and it looks like they might eventually be bought by someone like Apple or Nike that's what they're saying um, Business Insider or some stuff. I got kind of got into list. Uh, I kind of got into um, learning about stocks. I've been in the wrong layer the whole time. I was wondering why that wasn't changing. Sometimes you end up in the high layer trying to change the shadows. Uh, yeah, Peloton. Uh, during lockdown. I decided to learn about stocks and shares and I've got a trading two on two account now and I put money into that so that's interesting worth checking out there's a guy on Paul Briscoe by the there's a guy called Paul Briscoe on YouTube if you want to kind of get an intro into stocks and stocks and shares go and watch Paul Briscoe's channel I'm just looking at this I don't need to do any of this there's a little bit of like patchy light going on here so let's see if I can go into the high layer and just, yeah, take a little bit out there. See the way that those tones change there? We've got like one dark line there and another dark line there, another there. 
I could have caught that, you know, when I was shooting it, and I could have lit it to get rid of that. Alas, I did not, so I will just give that a little skim over. I don't want to do too much. I don't want to do too much. Let's leave this. Raw, you know, rawish. Just seems like we've got this sort of weird kind of shadow here now. So we're getting on half, half, half. We're getting on half an hour for this stream now. So I'll try and wrap it up pretty quickly. Thanks for watching, everyone. Didn't think anyone would be about for a live stream right now, but here we are. Might try and make this a regular thing. Maybe ad hoc. Maybe certain times of the day. Maybe certain days. Let me know your thoughts. It doesn't have to be retouching. It could just be live chat, yo. Uh, talking over recent projects. Anything I can. Anything you guys want to talk about? we can kind of go through it. A little here, here, boom. And finally, down here. So one thing that you might notice on some photographers' um, photos is that they will retouch the face and uh, they'll forget to retouch any other body part so there's this sort of like weird rubbery look on the model's face on the talent's face and everything else the lights uneven it doesn't look right it's almost like a sort of doll head on a real body so don't fall into that trap I uh, speak from experience I've done it before myself I've retouched something thought I'm finished and then looked at it and been like why how did I forget to retouch the rest of the person even though the face may be like where your eye goes instinctively don't forget the image as a whole yeah so nearly done this and then I will open the Photoshop file from that recent speedo shoot and uh, give you a little breakdown uh, let's just do a couple more minutes here wrong layer again gotta watch out that you're not on the low layer and I might just kind of blend that shadow in here we're kind of, in some of the images we've got uh, two contradicting shadows uh, we've got one from the window light and then we've got one this this hard light here this hard shadow here is from the constant light that we were using it was a Profoto B10 plus set quite warm just on the constant light which is great it's the first time i used it in that manner um although i was shooting at 320th of a second at quite a shallow depth of field i think it's at f2 i think i said earlier uh yeah it was kicking out enough light there and i think see i wasn't zooming out and now well it looks okay <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm very hay fevery today, bunged up. What are we saying? Let me just zoom in here. I've got my Dell screen here, which isn't colour calibrated, and I have my Mac screen there. So sometimes I refer to the Mac screen for colours and stuff. This looks quite orangey. So I might just brush this up click there a little bit. Just even this out a little bit. Going under the eye again. Stay away. C 
see, so I love to keep, sorry, excuse me, I realise I've got a mic on and I'm rubbing my nose. I like to keep a little bit of texture, or I like to keep all the texture in the skin. So that is definitely something if you're retouching uh, beauty stuff, uh, that's something that you should brush up on is uh, retouching skin. I'm getting a little flashing thing from my camera here. Oh, it just says that I'm streaming, I think. Uh, retouching skin, keep the texture. Don't go rubbery, avoid rubbery at all costs. Yeah, so there we are. That's where we started. That's where we are. There's not a huge amount of difference. One final thing that I will do today is I will get a high layer with a mask, invert, eraser, and I will just have the eraser set to kind of like 20 opacity, 20 flow, make it a bit bigger. Uh, brighten up some of the bright bits and this is just a way of I use this quite a lot in sports photography this is just a way of increasing contrast but not increasing contrast on the whole of the image just that was a bit crass wasn't it um, just adding in little bits in specific areas I'm not massive on this shadow here, by the way, of the hair and the light. It looks not quite right, but we'll crack on. Uh, yeah, so I just use uh, inverted curve layer that is set to brighten the image. And I will just go around and kind of emphasize the highlights. I can also use this to kind of even out uh, tones and things, different bits of light if you do it tastefully. So what you can do if you've been really on it, if you've been really sort of picky and what sort of like the pro retouchers will do is they will zoom in really far and get the eraser and just like let me see if I can find sort of, you know, to even something out. This is probably not the best example on her knee. I don't think many folk would do this. And they'll go right into the pixels and they will just sort of just go over and over until those pixels are the same. But we're not going to do that today. Uh, So yeah, it's doing a little bit there and I will just do the opposite for the shadows and this is where it's a little more sensitive and this is where you can see uh, a big difference. So I'll just go 15 with my brush opacity. Hey, we've had some people tuning in. Thank you for watching everyone. This little impromptu retouching session. If you're new to my channel, my name is Rich McKeever. I'm a commercial and advertising photographer living and working here in London. And on this channel, I share behind the scenes videos as well as tips and tutorials. So if that sounds like something you're into, please subscribe and like my videos. That's my intro spiel. It never normally comes out that sort of smooth. Normally I'm there cursing myself. Why can't I just do the intro? <laughs> but um, yeah, here we are. Okay, so uh, then I will group these highs and lows together just so we can see off and on. That's them on. That's them off, on, off, on. I'm gonna take the opacity down on that a little bit because it was a little too much. And that's this off and on. Group these together. And we've got off and on. So we've not needed to do a huge amount of work. We've just evened out some light and 
got rid of a few blemishes which don't even show up when we click off and on, we don't really see too much, but we did get rid of a little shadow under the eyes and on the model's right cheek. Camera left as we see it, we just evened that out. And it's those little things, and as well as that weird shadow that was falling on her stomach. Um, yeah, and her legs a little bit there as well. So, yeah, subtlety for me is the key in retouching. I'd probably go into the eyes a little bit here, maybe brighten those up. Let's do that now with a quick inverted curves layer. Now there's loads of different techniques, loads of different ways you can do this. You can go in with a brush, uh, like a paintbrush, and you know choose the colour of the eye, up it a little bit in the brightness or hue and saturation to really help emphasise. However, we'll leave that for another day because we're nearly 40 minutes into the stream here. We're nearly 40 minutes into the stream. Subtlety, subtlety, my friends. Let's group this. Command E to merge. Oh, sorry. Command J to duplicate just in case we need to go back for anything. Command E to flatten. Command J again to duplicate and then this is how I often finish off my images is I do a filter other high pass layer about five pixels soft light and it just sharpens it up a little bit I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the screen on the stream but off and on if you really want to go extreme you could go hard light Many of you will have seen this sort of hard light sharpening before. But seeing as I have been emphasizing subtlety today, I'm going to go soft light and I'm going to set that at about 80. That's kind of my default. That's kind of what I find doing it to most of my images. Yeah. And we will group, duplicate, flatten, bump. Before, after. Nice. Doesn't need much. Uh, now, whilst I have you here, we'll do open recent. Let's see if I have that recent speedo image and I will break that down for you. Speedo, speedo, speedo. So yeah, chuffed to shoot for speedo recently. Um, that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> the, the, you know, it's kind of like, hey Rich, can you shoot underwater? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course I can shoot underwater. No problem, don't worry about it. Um, I had to source the underwater housing, which very well nowhere in London had underwater housing I went rather than go to the sort of rental places who rent out lighting and stuff I went to um, like aqua marine specialists and uh, they didn't seem to rent them out and buying a buying a underwater housing um, for a Canon R6 was super expensive, a couple of grand, and then what I ended up buying was for the 5D Mark IV, I bought a Sea Frogs one, I've done a little unboxing on this channel. Um, but yeah, I ended up just buying it and kind of sub-renting it to them, so a little tip for photographers there, it's always good to invest in equipment when you can and when it's needed because I rented it back to them and I've rented it out a few times on Fat Llama recently and it has made its money back already in, a, in sort of like two months. So happy days. Anything that comes further now will be, it'll be making extra profit. So there we are. A little tip. Uh, Fat Llama. I've been renting loads of stuff out on there and it's good. The camera's going out tomorrow for a couple of days. Uh, with two lenses and then 
lights are going out at the end of the week for two days so here we go right so here we are this is the uh, original image and then I did a high and low layer like I was showing earlier one blurred to even out the light and one high to get to, to I don't know why I'm clicking that off and on but to do the textures anything textures and I think if I remember right I worked into uh, the model's faces here and again just evening out the light the way the light travels through the water is definitely something completely different to what I'm used to so there is a little bit of evening out of the light there just to help kind of create a bit of contrast you can see across the shoulder her left arm camera right as we see it just evened that out a little bit and kind of took a little bit of shadow off the strain in her neck here uh, Genevieve Genevieve's neck uh, yeah so there we go did that then I created another layer and we've got a lot of stuff going on here so where do we start um, let me flip these off here go go so this is skin high I've named this and this just much like what we've just done in the previous uh, image that we've just seen just using an inverted curve layer pulled up you can see you can drag it around I could make it darker now I could make it brighter if I wanted uh, as a mask uh, using the eraser and just kind of masking that those highlights back in there wasn't quite enough light on the model's faces we didn't have any light kicking up underneath them they're like a five uh, four meter deep end pool so yeah I just uh, kind of painted that back in there I'm going to end up sort of like tinkering with this now it could be a bit more subtle and then there is another high layer just to emphasize the light streaming through in the background there Al McKeever has retracted his message don't know what that was Keeve but I'm sure it wasn't very uh, PC um, then what I have done here is I have a folder of flares which I got from Adobe stock uh, where you can kind of download stock of anything it could be uh, templates or for social media templates website templates all that stuff Adobe stocks worth checking out it's a subscription so I only subscribed for like a month downloaded what I needed and now I still get to use it um, let me open one of these layers for you because this isn't going to do it justice so if I just open my finder and uh, search for flowers uh, shout out to this laptop for just handling all this so we have all our different flares here so what I can do is I'll pull I pull this in and I think I kind of rotated it 90 degrees counterclockwise and sort of made it massive here and then I just set it to screen now this is a bit crass but you can see kind of where I'm going with that if I delete that there so that's what it's at now then I added this curves layer to it just to kind of take a uh, just to make it a little darker in its dark bits and a bit brighter in its bright bits so we're not taking too much off the models and then hue and saturation layer as well and that's completely wrong I don't know what I've clicked there that's not right but <laughs> I've messed it up somehow anyway then I would have grouped those and done something and we get to what have I done there I've done something wrong ah okay I've changed it to pass through sorry sorry it should be screen there we go my apologies Bit embarrassing uh, so that is it with it off and then we kick those flares in and that's with it on the thing we're doing lives is that there is a bit of I mean and iron but here we are then I just added another little bit of curves just to kind of that what that flare often does is it kind of neutralizes the contrast in the image so what I often have to find myself doing afterwards is adding a little bit of curves 
and then we've uh, added a little bit of a warm photo filter here just to kind of kick back a bit of contrast and not leave us too blue. Then what I've done is I've flattened this and uh, flattened the image there, uh, group four, duplicated that layer, then command E to flatten it and we're left with this group four copy. Added a high pass layer on soft light like you've seen before little subtle this time we could have gone we could have gone hard light at 100 percent but that's not cool with the amount of like different fragments and reflections and little bubbles and things that's just not going to work uh, so we were at 45 there and then i just did a few little tweaks a little bit of brightness tiny bit of brightness and a little more orange there and just a little more curves and then flatten that image again and that is where we ended up so yeah, you can look at this and be like, ah, that's cool. Hold on, that's better. I also did a little bit of that tool, the squidgy tool, liquidize, liquefy, uh, just to kind of flatten out the cap there. I don't know why I'm pointing at it. You guys can't see what I'm pointing at. I'm going to actually use my pointer uh, to flatten out the cap there. So that is enough rambling from me. I hope you've enjoyed this let me just check that out. Uh, Keeve was I was complimenting your intro spiel but I would have been confusing if you didn't spot it afterwards so I deleted this comment. Nothing and PC rude. You can well now you've got this comment up here Keeve which is just does that even make even less sense? I digress. Uh, here we are. What if I do this? Boom. Yes, so that is where we are with this image today. That is where we started. That's where we finished. There's barely any difference, but hey, I needed to retouch this image. I wanted to test out the streaming jazz and it seems to have worked quite well. 48 minutes, 49 minutes of, let's see if that brings any use to anyone. If you got this far, if you're watching this video, let me know in the comments, I would love to do more of these. Uh, it's a great way of sharing my process and also I'd love to hear from you guys about sharing your process and no doubt, especially with retouching, you guys can give me some tips and we can progress and go further and create great photos. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Make sure you like and subscribe and uh, yeah, let me know what sort of, let me know if you're into this. All right, bye.